Join me as we talk all things true crime. And shattered. The parents have called me on a bus, but the mother has written on a wall. I'm out now, they can't find her. They've been doing work. Turn it over to another agency. Let's get some help. Where are your kids? They've been missing for four months. You have nothing to say? You're over here in Hawaii? Dad, where are Lori's kids? Four were stabbed multiple times and were likely asleep during the attack. Some had defensive wounds. Most of them had just like one that was the lethal uh, stab wound. Hello, everybody. Thank you for being here for another ATS live stream. I hope everybody had a good Thanksgiving for those who are in the U.S. who celebrated it. And everyone else, I'm glad you're here. And sorry, we took a little break while the holiday passed. So I appreciate you guys still hanging in there with me, even if you didn't have Thanksgiving. So we are back. We're on episode three. And I have some updates from a very reliable source that pretty much has told me that Chris is, you know, living a very comfortable life in his uh, new surroundings in prison. He is no longer working in the kitchen where we had reported that prior. In fact, CDT had reported that um, a couple years ago on her channel, which was accurate news. And she'll be joining me in a little bit too. But so he was working in the kitchen a few years ago. I've been updated on information that he's no longer in the kitchen. He still works every single day. He gets, I think, 20 cents a day for his job. Um, I know a lot of people probably don't want to hear this, but he's it's seemingly comfortable and, and adjusting to the prison life in a easy way, I guess. We kind of knew that it would be that, that way for Chris because he's very much about repetition and very much, you know, that's where he kind of finds his comfort is doing things over and over that is the same way. And we only know this from things that we've studied about him over the years. So um, I think it kind of makes sense that he's kind of adjusted rather quickly behind bars these last few years. Um, he no longer has photos of the family in his cell that was uh, reported years ago but they have made him take those down. He has a roommate. He um, is in general population where he, prior he was kind of locked up in an area that was secluded and away from other people, but now he's in general population and has been for a little bit. I know that he has another job. Hello, CDT. Hello, sorry I'm a little bit late. You're fine. <laughs> I've been listening to this, though. It's really interesting. Yeah, so he has another job. I'm not going to say on this episode where exactly it is. There's some stuff that I just kind of want to keep on the down low for my source's sake. But yeah, I mean, he. are you surprised that he's kind of adjusted in a kind of smooth way? Like he, he has people on his uh, list that he doesn't want to come and visit who have visited before. I won't get into specifics, but for those who know some of the people who have visited him in the past, it seems like a lot of those people, if not all of them, are now, you're not allowed to come and visit him anymore. So remember the PI, remember the author, they're all not allowed to have contact with him, like, and it's up to him, like he's decided so-and-so, so-and-so, and so-and-so, and so, you're not to come back and I don't want to see you. And who else was on that list? Well, the thing is, too, like the list of people that he doesn't want contact with are people who have like called him and like FaceTimed him there and people who have come and visited, including um, what's what is her name? Oh, duh. Agent Tammy. So. Everyone, like Agent Tammy and Coder and Baumhover, like they've come and visited him. He could say, like, no, put them on the list of no contact. 
but he hasn't. So I found that interesting that he's kind of, he's blocked certain people and then other people he said, you know, I guess if they came back, they would be allowed to interview him again because he hasn't put them on the no contact list, which I thought was interesting. That is super interesting. And I'm personally not surprised just from what we know of Chris (laughs) that he has, you know, integrated himself and is, you know, like you said, seemingly comfortable in there. I think he likes being told what to do. And yeah, but that's fascinating about like certain ones he took off. And then the fact he has not taken certain people off. Yeah. And the two girlfriends that he supposedly had, one of them, her name remind or rhymed with Hannah. <laughs> yeah. Like the H up. She's on the no contact um, list as well. And she, he was dating some Kim G. Well, I won't, I don't say her last name, but she's also like, no, they're not together anymore. Um, I don't know if he has a girlfriend right now. Thank you, Angie Erickson. It's good to see you. And I appreciate that so much. Um, yeah, actually, if you guys could just hit the thumbs up button or subscribe, that's really all the support I asked for. And everything else is, of course, appreciated. But um, so we don't know if he has a girlfriend. There are certain girls that he's in communication with. And those age ranges, um, they're like from 24 to I think up to like 44 or something like that. So he has contact with multiple women, which isn't surprising. Um, no. I guess, what was the other thing that, that, again, there's so much that I was kind of told that I'm just kind of, I need to keep some of it kind of hush hush for right now. But basically that's the gist of it is, you know, he is, he's a model um, inmate. He helps out um, other inmates, you know, ones that need help with like language and stuff like that. Like he'll show them how to use certain things to kind of communicate with people on the outside. I don't know that I guess they have like iPads and stuff like that. Um, it, it seems like it's not the type of prison where it's like, there's parts in that prison that they put the really like dangerous people and stuff like that. And he's not in that area. Like he's not in a secluded area like he was before. Remember where he said he was in there with like law enforcement snitches and other people yes. who were Yeah, he's not in that area anymore, but he's where they're at, like general population, I guess they just have jobs for them. So he's able to have like this, not free reign, but pretty much like in that area. Um, And he just works every day. So it's just part of his routine. Um, Of course, family is visiting him and he calls them all the time, etc. But I can get more information too um, from my source, but it'll have to be kind of on the low here and there because of obvious reasons. But yeah, I just thought that was interesting to kind of hear that, you know, it's not like his, I guess his cell doesn't even like lock behind him. Like it's just kind of open. That is really interesting to me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, even when he was in jail, remember in the discovery, all the notes about how he was acting, it was basically like model (laughs) prisoner all across the board. Yeah. Uh, I don't think he's had like any reports of like bad behavior in a few years now. So um, yeah, he is still in Wisconsin, right? Yes. Yeah, he's still in Wisconsin, uh, just not in that one secluded area anymore. He's in general pop. And I guess this prison is just known for being a work prison, whatever that means. But it sounds like it's set up a lot more like lackadaisical than other prisons. And everyone knows who he is, apparently. Everyone knows what he's done. Um, So I think that that's interesting, too. And I I don't know from what I don't know the specifics, but from what I hear, it doesn't seem like he gets harassment from other inmates either. Interesting. I sometimes can't help but still wonder about Dylan and David. I mean, you know, I've kind of taken a hiatus (laughs) from true crime a little bit, but um, like just thinking back to what those two men who were in there with Chris have said, what David called into Tammy Lee and tried to get out and nothing ever came of it. I know. And 
He's dating Trent, Sandy says. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you mentioned Trent because I literally was like, anything about Trent, like on this like yeah. no contact stuff, and they didn't have any information about Trent being like on the go ahead or don't talk to me type of list. So <laughs> I so wonder why he's up Trent to just him. kind of disappeared. Yeah, <laughs> Trent bolted. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. Oh my God. All right. So again, this is episode three. We've gone through the CCTV footage, the body cam, and now we're going to kind of transition to when Detective Baumhover shows up on scene and he is the local, I think, Frederick uh, detective and he's in like a maroon dress shirt. You'll see him if you guys are new to this. Um, if you're not new, you'll kind of know that this is the detective who after the case was over, uh, put in an early retirement through, I believe, disability for PTSD. And he claimed that the uh, recovery of the, the little girls in the tanks are kind of what set him into this spiral of PTSD. And he had to step away from the job. Now, I do believe that that probably was a horrific scene, and I'm sure it did cause PTSD for him, but there's always been sort of a little bit of talk and speculation, and obviously we don't know what's going on in his head besides him, but people have wondered if he kind of, sorry, I'm trying to position so you can see my tree. I he, love the tree. <laughs> Thanks. People have wondered if, you know, part of his retirement, of course, it had to do with PTSD, but is it a little bit to do with the way that the case kind of was handled? He was passed NK, the mistress, and kind of handed off her to him from the CBI agent. And he's in pretty much the last person to have been, I think, kind of investigating NK before the plea deal took place. So I think that there's a lot of stuff that maybe he didn't have control of because people above him and higher ranking people just said, this is it. He signed the plea deal and that's it. So what do you think about Baumhofer before we get started? Um, I, I think it's fascinating. You're reminding me how he was handed over NK. He also, to my memory, was the one who was supposed to interview Nate. It was sometime at the end of October, I believe. Um, so I can't help but wonder if that happened. He was really trying to get more of Nate's footage. And then also, I think Baumhofer's body language, facial expressions are fascinating in the um, press conference. I think it's the one after the sentencing. And um, Rourke was asked about NK and he said she was mostly forthcoming. And then I think his wording was she did hinder the investigation because she deleted all contact. But um, I remember we've discussed at some point in our years of discussion um, just watch Baumhofer during that um, press conference. And I'm with you. Like, I can't help but wonder if maybe he does know a whole lot more, have a lot more of an opinion. But like you said, his hands were tied with the way it all played out. And it gets stranger, too, is he started a blog about PTSD and expressing, you know, what he had gone through with this case and the heartache. And I mean, you guys can still look it up. It's out there. But from the last time that we've looked, he just kind of stopped writing on the blog. But one of the entries that he wrote was um, kind of defending their stance with NK and pretty much saying that she had nothing to do with it and all this stuff. And it's like, you wonder sometimes if that was his true thoughts or if it's just what he kind of has to come out and say. I don't know. It seems complex, but you just reminded me to the last episode. We talked about how Shanann was headed for this separation and people were still kind of like, no, they weren't separating. I found a text message. And again, all this stuff is kind of in the discovery. You can find it. And it's her and her friend. She says, Shanann says, I honestly wish I wasn't pregnant, not because of the child, but because they don't deserve this life. And the friend says, it's hard enough to be pregnant. And on top of that, separating. So just kind of to back up the things that we kind of discussed last time, um, you know, her speaking with that lawyer in the spring and uh, Sandy's co-worker saying that they were headed for a divorce or separation. 
there is just a lot of circumstantial evidence that kind of it does point to, you know, they were kind of headed towards that way. But I think her last trip to Arizona, she kind of had a change of heart, wrote him that letter, bought that book. And again, we are we know what happens next. So I just wanted to lay that out there because I don't want to just say things and not back up what uh, what we've kind of researched, but you can trust our research. <laughs> yes. And there's also that interview. Again, once again, like Shanann's not here to tell her side of it. Sandy, I don't know. I can't remember. She did write a letter, but remember that interview with the hair lady who worked with Sandy? And she's, mm -hmm. didn't she say like, yeah, they were going to separate to our understanding. Yeah. So again, I mean, will we ever know for sure? No, but there is definitely um, like a paper trail, if you will, that did mention the separation. Yeah. And Constanza, sorry. She said, so what? I would say the same thing about the baby. She was so hormonal. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying it. I'm not even saying anything about what she said about the baby. I'm just saying there was talks of separation. Now, again, who knows what kind of was said between Chris and her before she took off? You know, he knew because I believe this was very premeditated. He knew what was going to happen when she got back. So was he feeding her things like we're going to work this out and all this stuff? Um, we don't really know. Oh, there we go. Okay, let's get into this camera when uh, Baumhofer shows up. But I thought it was kind of odd that he never parked in front of here or right here. He said someone broke into his truck and he parked over here. I have no idea. Hey, he's acting so suspicious. He's normally, you can ask them, he's normally quiet, we'll subdue. He's over here telling them, telling you three times what he took out, what he did, what he did, what yeah, he did. He's very, he's very, he never talks. So the fact that he's over here blabbing his mouth makes me kind of suspicious. Huh? Yeah, but, I mean, you put yourself in his situation. Oh, I agree. You know, anyone's going to be nervous, he don't know what to do. Um, no, I agree, but I'm just saying the way he told you three times what he brought with him. Why is he telling you exactly what he brought with him instead of saying, well, they didn't see anybody out here. He didn't see anybody doing anything. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Why is he so worried about you knowing what he's carrying out? That's all I'm saying. What's that? He's talking to him right now. Okay. Possibly. I mean, it didn't pick her up going in from when you dropped her off. But I, I did wait. I know she made it in the house because I waited until she shut the front door. Right. But his video just showed you yeah, backing know. out, so there's a gap there that yeah. didn't pick up. Do these neighbors have cameras? Uh, I'm going to have to. I'm going to walk here in a minute. And... I'm pretty sure he doesn't, but it wouldn't surprise me if the people in that store Right. Yeah, I don't see any on that one or that one, just yeah, looking. But... He's got a big old group in Shepard, but he says it's his protection. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Works a little better than a camera. If he was out here right now, you'd know. Yeah. <laughs> Barney gets a little crazy when he sees people he doesn't know. He's knocked out the fence post, or the pickets. Yeah. Because he runs and hits the fence. He's knocked the pickets down. Oh, her mom warned me when we first moved in. Her mom Hello? was like, that dog's so mean. Yeah. Did she, did she walk I don't know. the driveway, or did she walk through the... She walked through the, right here, because I pulled her. 
Do you, you want to talk to the police officer? officer? This is your mother. Hello? Hi, this is Janet. Hey, how are you? Right. So here, I feel like maybe him being on the phone, he got a little distracted, but we've always kind of pointed out the fact that there's like toys and sippy cups in that trash can. Yes. And the fact that it got taken away, like we will never know what was in this because it got picked up. But and, yes, I agree. Yeah. He's on the phone and there's, in my opinion, I think I made a video on it. It looks like a doll that was either given to them by Sandy or was Sandy's doll, like mm -hmm. the clothing match. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I believe it was an old doll of Sandy's, which kind of made it more of something surprising because it was like, why would they throw out an old doll like that? You know what I mean? Like at, at, when I say they, I mean like, why would Shanann or Chris do that without any reason? You know what I mean? I know rapper okay. I've blocked, I think maybe two or three accounts already. Like I, I put it on subscriber mode to kind of keep the trolls out mods, but just keep an eye out because I kind of have a, a hunch who rapper is. Well, maybe it's my clone. Hey. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like yeah. I think we know who you are. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing about this um, case is there's a lot of trolls and a lot of weirdos that followed it. <laughs> but I, I have to say that CDT and I are people who have tried to stay so far away from the drama in this case, but yet the trolls will always come. Yeah, like Marshall Dove says, trolls with this case are expected. And it's so odd that people get so worked up, it seems like, over this case. Like, how dare you, this case is over. How dare you talk about it? Like you don't have to watch, you can move on, but we find it fascinating the way it ended, et cetera, et cetera. People talk about the Manson yeah. case. People talk about Ted Bundy. So there's my Ted talk. <laughs> We're going to keep talking about it. Right. And I cover other cases too. And yet these people who come and complain about the Watts one, I'm like, where are you when I'm covering other cases? <laughs> yeah, if you're like, I have other options, you can watch. Yeah. But yes, watch the trash. Right. Right. What is your name? Sandra. Can you spell your last name for me? What is your date of birth, Sandra? What's your phone number? So how would you describe their relationship recently? Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Sandy's calling you. That's her mom. Is that who you're talking to? I keeps beeping. That's probably just tech oh.
Right. Mm-hmm. Now, I can't help but wonder, you know, did they ever fingerprint the Lexus for other people's prints? Now, again, we know MK admits to being in that car, I think, a few times. But, you know, was leave Jim Malone's prints on there or was NK's father's prints on there was, you know what I mean? Was there anybody who kind of placed themselves in and around that crime scene that we just never will know like how it was processed? Even the vacuum remnants that were um, thrown away after this day, I think the next day that they come in here, there's like stuff in the trash from the vacuum, you know, where did all that come from or go what was found in there, whose hair was found in there. We can excuse maybe NK's hair being in there because she admits to being at the house, but anyone else's hair that was in there, um, it's kind of unsettling. Like if, if Lee Jim Malone's hair was in there, that to me is huge. I agree. And once again, the fact that, I don't know, there's conflicting reports. I've heard people say that leave Jim alone was interviewed, but I don't know that I believe that. I've seen no proof of it. Um, but that in itself is just so frustrating. And yeah, like you said, like this trash that we just looked at is gone. We don't know who hair fingerprints possibly was in the Lexus that should have been like, there's so many unknowns. The house was released so quickly. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Yeah. And like Maligator says, which just reminded me of another comment I got on our other, other episode. I don't think they did anything because they got Chris to take the plea and I don't think we'll ever know. And somebody commented and said, no, that's not true. Um, the family has seen all the evidence. And so I believe what the family has to say. And I couldn't help but, you know, I'm not saying don't believe the family because I would never say anything like that because... You know, I'm sure they do know stuff that we don't know. I mean, Frank Sr. has admitted that he knows stuff that the public doesn't know. But the thing to say that they've seen all the evidence and all that, like that just cannot be true because they never even finished processing the evidence. They didn't do the federal scan of fingerprints. They didn't find out whose footprint was out at Survey. They didn't do like the stuff in the lab and all that because or even the phone forensics probably you know, once they get a warrant for Snapchat and once they get a warrant for that secret calculator, like we don't see any of that information. None of it was processed because the plea deal, you know, kind of stopped all that. So for people to say, no, we've, we've seen all the evidence or the family has seen all the evidence, like that's just, I'm sorry, but that's just not true. And even when the NK video came out where we finally saw it in person, that was the first time Frankie ever seen it. So you can't have it both ways where you, you guys claim that you have stuff other people don't, which you might, but, you know, as far as certain things, like, it seems like you were getting at the same time we were too, you know, and it was released to the public after the plea deal. Right. And they, I mean, they straight up say in discovery that they did not get everything off the phones. Like it tells us that they did not Um, so I'm with you. Like there, there's no way because they didn't process or collect everything. And Florida says, what gets me is Chris didn't have time to dig a hole, bury Shanann, kill and dump both girls all in one hour before co-workers arrived at Servies. Don't break a sweat or get dirty either. And remember, he changed how many times that morning? Three, wasn't it? Yeah, at least twice i think he's wearing like that black shirt in the driveway loading the truck we already went through that mm -hmm. um he comes home in the gray shirt we see him in that and then i believe in troy mccoy's interviews he says that at one point chris was wearing a baggy blue fire resistant shirt so uh, and mind you guys the data that we do have of phones shows that you know he's texting his his co-workers all within the time that the prosecution and the district attorney is saying that he's digging this hole and killing the girls. 
So the, the exactly. timeline, I absolutely believe like, yeah, you're right. Like, how could he be standing there texting and telling them like, I'm out here, or come meet me out here or whatever, you know? Exactly. Right. Right. That's kind of the person everyone's telling me. Uh, we're not finding our purse. Not yet. We're just trying to figure out if she's missing at this point. Um, and right. Mm -hmm. That started today. What school is that? Primrose. What town is that in? something out, um, we will let you know. Right. So that's Baum over there on the left. As um, Coonrod was on the phone with Sandy, you could kind of see him. I even saw him look like he was like smelling the air. He was kind of just walking around. Um, 
you know, and people have, I see in chat talking about Nicole Atkinson letting her kids run around all over the place. And obviously they're contaminating the scene. Hello, Melissa Jade. And I saw Roxanne earlier. Thank you guys for being here. Um, I just, you would think even Baumhover would say, if you guys don't have anything else, the kind of information to provide to us, would you mind if we just kind of uh, vacate the scene while we look at things, you know? Yeah. And I, I agree. And again, I wish that they had read Chris Watts a little bit better. Like, whenever I say this, people are like, well, he they couldn't make him do anything. He wasn't under arrest. I understand that. But what I'm saying is I feel like if they had kind of read Chris, they could have gotten him to the station that night, at least for an interview and seen where it went. But they didn't even ask that we can tell unless they did it off the body cam. Um, it seems like they didn't even ask him to come in that Monday. Now with the primrose, I seen, you know, somebody say something like in one of my comments that you responded to about um, he withdrew them from school, like pretty much saying that that made him look guilty or whatever, or why would he do it on the day that she was supposed to start kindergarten or something like that? Yeah. And then you brought up how she actually wasn't supposed to start kindergarten. It was just going to be a regular daycare day. And I think a lot of people missed that point. Yeah. So technically, yeah, the kindergarten was like, I guess, a program through Primrose and Shanann just called it kindergarten. It wasn't like a public or private school kindergarten. But exactly. That was not set until I believe the following Monday because she had asked Chris if he could take off to go with her. And he said he could do that. Obviously, there was no discussion. Oh, well, Chris had taken off to go with her to kindergarten. Like that kindergarten situation was not the 13th. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. Because I think that it, it does matter because he calls the kindergarten place and he says they're not there, are they? Which everyone's kind of like, wait, what do you mean? Like, why would he do that? And it's like, to me, I'm feeling like, and again, for those who are just joining me, like, I don't think that the kids were in Chris's plan. And I feel like at one point he was looking for them or I don't know. But I, I think that him calling and saying they're not there, are they, wasn't just him acting like innocent. You know what I mean? Right, right. I Maybe think you can really... perceive it that way, but you could also perceive it as he really was confused about where they were. Right which obviously means there's other people involved. So I just wanted to lay that out there. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Yes. And yeah, the daycare was Primrose. Um, Bella was born in 2008 or 2013 of December, I believe. So she wouldn't have started mm -hmm. until 2019, if I'm correct about that. Because I feel like Bella was born the same year as my son. And then Cece was born in 2015, the same year as my daughter. Um, but, yeah, the kindergarten situation was not meant for that Monday. Thank you. Do you have any current pictures of her? Oh, 
strips. Recent, they're pretty recent though. What's that? This strip's pretty recent. That was last year. This looks okay, Shane? Yeah. No, it's down so Is that the one down there? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I'm that one's empty. Another thing, real fast. I didn't see anything on those. Is that we have laid out that the suitcases moved. I have a video about it. You might as well, Amber, and we've discussed it, but like from the basement to there, like I can't remember the details, but they do move overnight. Mm -hmm. I do. I vaguely remember that. Yeah. And Amber, I'll be right back, but I'll be in chat. Okay. I just want to pause it real quick. For one, thank you, MK, for gifting five memberships and welcome to the new members. And I really appreciate that, MK. Somebody earlier in chat said that some YouTuber showed Chris pulling something out of the Lexus or something like that. And, and I responded saying that we've shown that too. Um, I found actually where I, oh, and thank you, Kez Chick, for, be, for being a member for nine months. I didn't even see that till now. Thank you so much. And what I wanted to kind of show you real quick, it's just, it's still kind of in reference to this timeline um, on the body cam, but not only does he pull something out of the Lexus, but he kind of comes around the um, truck. Hold on, let me share my screen. He comes around his own truck. Um, and grab something on the passenger side of his screen. So somebody said some new YouTuber who's covering the case showed it. And I said that we've shown it too. This video is, I think, I don't know, four years old, three years old. This is interesting too. Just wanted to show you guys. So you can kind of see he had come around and we don't know what he's doing and nobody ever asks him. He does something here on the passenger side of his truck when he had first pulled in. I don't know, you know, and, and again, I've slowed this down, but what exactly he was doing, you know, while the cop is standing right there, it was obviously something important to do right away. Um, because, I mean, obviously the priority at this moment is your family is missing and there's a cop at your house. Yet he parks, goes right to his passenger side of his truck, does something. I don't know if that's when he kind of grabbed the wedding ring or something. Because I know people have said, oh, he grabbed something, the wedding ring out of the Lexus. 
I don't know like what's going on really. Um, something that had to have been done immediately for him to kind of pick that as a priority. Don't mind the, the um, words on the screen because this is part of a different video. Um, but yep, this is regular time, shakes their hand. And then this is where I had slowed down um, him do that with the Lexus. So what he's doing here, we all have questions. Some people think, oh, he's grabbing Shanann's ring or whatever. Uh, whatever he did, he dropped it. So I just wanted to show that to you guys because I think it's important to kind of, you know, we, I appreciate other people keeping this case alive. I really do. And I'm not trying to talk crap about anyone covering this, but there's people who think that this new creator is coming out with all this new stuff. Come to find out it's like all stuff that even CDT has on her channel, which is linked in the description box. So if you guys are looking for more digging and more stuff that you never knew about, definitely check out CDT's link and you'll find me over on the that channel too when we dug into this for like years at a time. Like I'm telling you, there's nothing in this case that we haven't kind of covered and talked about and it's really good research. Hey, Brooks. So there, I don't know if you guys seen, but there's like a Thrive patch on the shower. Like in the shower. Hold on, let me rewind it. Thank you for becoming a member of Bewitching Beauty. Thank you, Allison, for being a member for 13 months. I appreciate you and all your support. So Thistle asked, and thank you for becoming a member, Katie Rose. Thistle asked, they did Blue Star throughout the house, right? From what I remember, I, I for sure think they did it in the basement. Uh, I'd have to go through and what do you remember about that CDT? Yeah, I do feel like it's mentioned that they did use it at least some places. Mm -hmm. um, but I can't remember the details enough to truly comment on, comment on it. But I'll go look as we watch. I'm going to go to the Discovery and see what I can find as we keep going. Awesome. And Sherry, that's that's good that he credits other YouTubers. I haven't watched, you know, all where he's done that, but I I share his stuff in my Facebook group 
um, when people share it. So if anyone wants to, and hello, Deco Painter and Tee, it's good to see you. If anyone wants to join the Facebook group, it's linked in the description box and you can find, you know, even more discussion on this. Sandy says, what is Blue Star? I believe it's something like Luminol where it would show bodily fluids or blood, um, something like that. It's some chemical that's used in forensics. Yeah, I, I I know a lot of people love his stuff, Debbie. So I, I always share it in my group. Now I'm just thinking about the blue star kind of definitely being mentioned in my memory in the basement. And that kind of goes back to what you were saying on episode two, that we're not certain what took place in the basement, but it seems like they focused a lot on it. Like not only with that blue star aspect that I'm, you know, remembering now, but in prison, when they interview him, there's a lot of questions about the basement and his activities in the basement. So something was pointing towards the basement for investigators for sure. Yeah, there was a lot of activity from the dog in the basement as well. Um, now, I don't know if it was the tracking dog. People have called it also the trauma dog. Again, I've never seen another case where they have a trauma dog. I don't know. That's always been weird to me in this case. But for sure, the cadaver dog, I think there was some hit that a, one of the dogs made. I can't remember what kind it was, but it's in the discovery and they were interested in something and they went and they got another dog to kind of come there and verify the scent and the hit and the next dog didn't verify it so they kind of wrote it off as like okay i guess it's nothing but again we don't know what could have been found or processed or what was because everything kind of just stopped you know when you think about the case this magnitude it takes weeks and weeks for labs and all that and this was done within, you know, a couple weeks, months. Um, by November, everything was kind of done. Yeah. Um, Bewitching Beauty says, does anyone know about the silver canister that was found at the survey site? It had the name Celeste on it. So that wasn't found at the survey site. From our research in it, it was a supplemental report in the discovery that spoke about how Detective Baumhover had gone to a lab, wasn't it? Yeah, I believe it was actually something that, like, evidence in that canister with Celeste's name on it. Yes. So I guess technically um, it was from the, like, the crime scene. Right. But the, the canister itself wasn't found, like, at Servi. Um, it was probably biohazard material or something uh, related to Celeste, you know, whether it was, and I hate to even yeah. get graphic, but I mean, you guys can just imagine there, there's something that was related to Celeste that had to have been taken to a lab and that it was picked up specifically by a special detective. Um, but it, it had significance for sure. But again, once everything kind of got halted, we never really got a follow-up on it. Yeah, and I found it in the discovery on page 71. So it says, on August 18th, 2018, at approximately 1530 hours, I was advised by Baumhalver to respond to the McKee Medical Center to retrieve an item of evidence regarding this case. 
I later arrived on scene and was handed a silver canister with the word Celeste. I then returned to Frederick PD and handed it to the detective. So it seems like Baumhalver actually got it from um, McKee Medical Center in Loveland on okay. August 18th. Yeah. And then I found discovery so far for Blue Star, page 410. It says Blue Star testing of the bathrooms, stairs, entry to the garage, and bedrooms, and no presumptive blood was located. But I don't know if there's more. That's just the first one I found about Blue Star. So it seems like they did all the bathrooms, stairs, garage entryway, and bedrooms. Wow. See, and that's the thing is we've gone over this stuff, but just to kind of rehear it and to know, you know, that's significant that, that yeah. there was nothing found in those areas. And I haven't found yet any mention of Blue Star in the basement, but I am still looking. And then again, some of these pages um, are not searchable, so you can type in a word and it's not going to come up. But at least we know where it's mentioned so far. Thank you so much. And actually, as, as I typed in blue, I just stumbled on this piece that was always interesting. Um, not even the first and only one, but description, quantity, recovered light blue nitro glove. Um, you know, the fact that they found medical or whatever type of gloves you want to call those. Uh, some people use them even when they're cleaning there was, you know, and is was this one in Bella's room? Either way, there was definitely one on top of the refrigerator. So with one of Bella's books. And I know that you did a, a video specifically on that. So, you know, there's just these little things um, that kind of just stand out. No, it was, I was thinking it was closer. Oh. It was the other ones had on kind of half made. So they're honing in on the way that the beds look, which obviously was a red flag for any of us who kind of seen this on the body cam first thing um, right away. It was kind of like, what the heck? So yeah, this states here that the blue nitro glove was located on top of the refrigerator in the kitchen on scene. Um, and then thank you, Roxanne, for sending me something on Cash App. I appreciate that and I love you. Now here, this has always been something that I kind of brushed off as like, oh, that's a nothing burger. But, you know, we can't leave it off the possibilities. And that is a crawl space above this uh, laundry room area. Um, I have one in my newest place where you kind of pull the rope and it's the attic, you know. Um, I've never seen anything about them opening that up. I've never seen anything about it being mentioned. I don't know about you. No, I've never seen anything um, other than I think Jane with the dog did get up there and like pushed it up maybe and like peeked up there, but never anything about like looking in depth wow. up there. See, that's interesting. Like everyone bad mouths Jane. Yeah. But, but looking back at it, I feel like people tried to, and when I say people, I think that there were trolls in this case that were plants from law enforcement and the prosecution team. And I know that sounds crazy, but if you guys are following this case, as long as we have, you would realize like it's not out of the realm of possibility, even for NK and her friends to kind of be in our comment section trolling us. But people tried to make it seem like Jade had no idea what she was doing. But her dog is also the dog that, and 
was picking up stuff near where the bullets were found. She found the bullets herself too, for, you know, this old woman who doesn't know what she's doing. She was able to find these shell casings and all that in the neighborhood. She also said that you, you really can't hear it too much, but she says something along the lines of she didn't leave on foot or something like that or willingly or something like that. Yeah, it's like right when they're outside. I do remember that. And it, like you said, it's hard to hear because it's windy and stuff. But yeah, she said something along those lines for sure. So she might not have been perfect, but I think that we've kind of seen in a lot of these people in this case, like we've criticized them, you know, and she also got criticized. But I don't know. It's just interesting that she looked up there. And again, she didn't come in on day one. Um, so is it possible something was hidden up there and Chris disposed of it? You know, we don't see Baumhofer ever look in there. We don't see Coonrod look in there. That other uh, officer who kind of shows up who's heavier set, don't remember his name. He never looks in there. Um, I don't know. It's just, I think that that crawl space is still significant um, as a possibility that maybe even what if NK was hiding up there at one point when Nicole Atkinson was knocking on the door, like who knows really? Like, I just think it's, it's interesting and, and something in this case that like, we just don't know the truth. So who knows? Exactly. And um, like you made me think that, yeah, Jane wasn't here on day one. So what would it have been like if Bomb Halver or Coonrod or whoever was there on day one had got up there and pushed it? So Jane pulled the dog away from the red dumpsters, though, didn't she? The dog was pulling towards it, as I remember. The dog was definitely, you know, showing, telling her things near those dumpsters and where those bullets were. I do believe that. Um Will we ever know what was it, what was in those dumpsters? People have speculated he dumped stuff there, but who knows, really, right? But again, it's just there's things that she did wrong, but there was things I think that we look back and we realize like that dog really was trying to say something. And honestly, it wouldn't be hard to get in that crawl space. All you have to do is step right on those washer dryers. Yeah. Now, here's the other thing that just is boggles my mind. So not only does he bathe the girls before he puts them to bed that night, but you could see there in Celeste's bed, which she was still kind of small at the time, you know, even to be like in a big bed, I feel. But they put pillows on both sides of her. You could see it on the um, her bed there in case, you know, that she rolls over and falls off. Now, why would somebody who's planning on, you know what, his own children care if she rolled off the bed these are the things that stand out to me where i'm like the kids weren't in his plan yeah i do see where you're coming from on that the whole thing is just so bizarre and i was just looking at Kristen's comment not to change the subject but i did a video on that too where jane's dog tried to pee in the dining room I didn't realize that that was what had happened actually when I made my video and then people pointed it out to me, but you're right. Like Jane gasps like an audible gasp. And then she's like, just seems so flabbergasted and shocked that the dog tried to go to the bathroom in there. So it does make you wonder like, what is the science behind that? 
Yeah. Like why would the dog feel like it needed to mark that territory? Yeah. Like what did it smell there that thought to it? Like I need to, um, put my scent. Cause that's why dogs, you know, when they lift their leg, like they always, tr- they, for males at least, probably females too, but they smell another dog and they want to get their scent on top of the other one. So that's why they try to do it even higher than the first scent that they're smelling. So it's, you know, maybe because they had other dogs in that house when Sandy lived with them and Frank, they had their dogs. So maybe it smelled like an old urine scent and thought I'm going to mark here. But at the same time, what if it's another type of scent that it smelled and was like, I'm going to put my scent, you know what I mean? Right. It's it's weird. It's really weird. I agree. Like it could have just been Dieter. Like, you know, they did have Dieter. So, but we'll never know. It's just. We'll never know. Sad. Like so much. Weird. This is another conundrum. <laughs> like, once again, Coonrod has been there for how long and hasn't even, like, tried to open this door? He's like, oh, it was locked when I got here. Once again, not placing blame, but, like, what if there had been, like, a medical emergency or, like, I don't know, something, a gas leak or, I don't know, and they all happen to be in the bathroom. Like, it's just interesting that Coonrod wasn't too worried about opening the door and then the key situation is about to happen where Chris had the key and then puts it back up over the door frame and then yeah. no water in the toilet. This, this is like the first times that we're seeing in the kids' rooms. Yes. From Coonrod's angle. I True. mean, and now the other question I had is I believe that Baumhover is wearing a camera himself. Probably. Hi. Yeah. I think, I don't know. There's something I don't know if it's like a little recorder where he can make notes and, but I don't know. I don't know. Either way, if he does have his own camera, I'd be curious, like why didn't the public get his view or whatever, you know, but right. besides all that, like you said, it's interesting that they realize that the, the bathroom door is locked, right? Yeah. And the key is kept at the uh, top of the molding, I guess, of yes. the door and there's no water in the toilet. No, that's the whole thing that people have said. Well, the kids, they locked it because the kids would play. They didn't want them going in the toilet and playing. Sometimes, right. sometimes CC would do that, I guess. Like, again, it's possible because they're just little kids. Um, other people have thought that that's super weird. You know, it, does it have anything to do with getting rid of evidence down the toilet? People have thought, and maybe that's why that there was no water. Because sometimes when you dump like a bucket, I don't know if you guys have ever done it. It kind of flushes your whole bowl out sometimes, like a a mop bucket or something. But either way, the other thing I noticed, too, is the fan going crazy up here. We found out through Shanann's Facebook page that they had bad AC up there or something. Like, it got hot. Yeah. So, So people have been like, oh, that's sketchy. He was trying to air things out or whatever. And it's like, well, it could be, but we actually know from her own post that They were having heating issues and AC issues and the upstairs was just always super hot during this time. It was the, you know, still in August, mid August, and it's, it's pretty hot. So I don't really pay too much into the whole fan thing, but didn't they say on the second day after he stays the night there that it smelled like bleach or something? I do believe so. I can double check, but yeah, I do think when they came back, it did smell like cleaning stuff and then NK didn't NK say well they were both doing laundry and he was washing the sheets yep yep so he definitely was actively cleaning again a lot of people try to dispose of things in the washer too you know on whatever clothing where is Shanann's clothing right that is something that's stood out to me for a long time. Um, the fact that she's kind of changed a few times too. And when I say that, I mean what she's found in, what she comes home in, and to top it all off, 
doesn't Chris describe her in a totally different shirt? I think so. I'd have to double check. Yes, yes. But yeah, yes. I just found, I typed in cleaning in the discovery search and Tuesday, August 14th, this is um, Officer Lines report. And she says upon arrival, where did it go? It smelled strongly. I lost it, but of cleaning materials. Yes, I cleaning see supplies. It. Yeah, you found I, it. Yeah, cleaning yes. chemicals. And the home appeared spotless, and the carpet had noticeable vacuum lines. But yet, nothing is mentioned about, like you mentioned earlier, the contents of the vacuum. And when we see the body cam into the trash can, it looks like vacuum remnants. And... Yeah. So that's all on page 39. Again, you guys can search words, which is something yeah. that CDT is, you know, made. Uh, she's like a pro at it. Um, she finds the most interesting things just when we would do word searches. And that's on uh, Google. You guys can just find the discovery on there. Now we're only going until for 20 more minutes because I don't want to make these too long where we're not on our our ball and in the best game that we can be because we have a lot of info and I don't want to drag it all out. I think that's a good idea. So people aren't overwhelmed as you know, also. <laughs> yeah. Cause a lot of our stuff, we're just kind of remembering on the spot. So we appreciate you guys kind of hanging with us with the randomness. Now, again, kind of just follow up with what we've already said, but this is the first time they're even opening a closet in the girls' room. I mean, what if they were in there? Exactly. Yeah. What if it, I mean, a home invasion where they were tied up or something, yeah. and, you know, I'm not trying to get graphic, but like where they couldn't scream or make noise, like, or killed, like you just never know. And then another thing, like with that kind of thought process, like we have just heard that allegedly there been a there's been a break in attempt to Chris's truck, so it's like okay, maybe we should check the whole house and make sure they're not in there hurt. Right, and that almost would seem like was Chris being targeted, you know? So they almost should have already been like on on this kind of like oh wow okay um so his truck was broken in like you said like why didn't that kind of alert things to kind of them kind of move through the house better and like open each door kind of like they do later when they show up at the house after some random woman was allegedly walking in it after um, he's arrested. Oh yeah. That's a whole nother bizarre situation. What's this door right here go to? It's locked. Do you have a key for it? Yeah. Yeah, they, they wake up and tell them to go right here and just play in the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's bright. So you normally, yeah, no, so you normally keep it locked? Yeah, because yeah. they, yeah. yeah. They would go in there, they'd be in the soap. Like last time we had Vaseline everywhere. You know, so that was not fun. See, I do kind of believe that that, that kind of was always just a habit for them to lock it. Like, I don't think there's anything really nefarious about this bathroom and stuff. I don't know. Right. My only thing that I think is interesting is how it looks like he has the key in the pocket. That's my only thing. Like, I do kind of could see it making sense that they don't use that bathroom. Because also, doesn't it seem like they had, like, more of the kids shower and bath stuff um, at the bathroom beside the playroom. So it's like maybe yeah. they really don't use this bathroom at all. And it is because it is so easily accessible. So they just lock it 
forget it because they were so little. I could 100% see CC like getting into Vaseline or playing <laughs> whatever. But like, that's my only thing with this bathroom is why he had the key in his pocket. Like if he had reached up and grabbed it from a door above the door and then just put it back up there, I'd be like, okay, bathroom, nothing on my thoughts. But the fact he had it in his pocket is just weird to me. Yeah, I agree. It's just all like a puzzle. Yeah, and I do know some people say, well, if the camera kind of moved a certain way. Maybe he did grab it from above the door. But in my opinion, it looked like he had it in his pocket. And you guys are more than welcome to rewind and, and check out what you think and comment below because we did the same thing with the curtain at the back door. Some people were commenting saying, yes, the curtain was open to the kitchen and then it was shut. Other people were saying it was shut the whole time. So sometimes it's just the little things in this case that we all don't see the same thing. <laughs> so does she normally make the beds, the kids' beds? No, not normally. Do you believe that? He said, do the, no. she norm I don't believe that either. I think Shanann made their beds. Um, yes, I do too. And I think N.A. said that too. Yeah, but she yeah. was kind of alerted at the way that their beds looked. Right. And see, that would be another thing like he, Sandy may know, you know. Right. Or maybe she didn't make their beds and she really like, you know, it was just kind of all a facade for her MLM, like not judging, but right. maybe she didn't. I don't know. But yeah, I kind of feel like she did though. She was kind of like Chris with the, the cleanliness um, yeah. on an OCD level. Um, but again, another thing that we'll, we won't know if Chris was lying here or, or telling the truth, you know? Yeah. And same, like my kids never messed with the toilet, never. I will say my daughter was more interested in drawers than my son, but never the toilet. Yeah, yeah luckily, it's just yeah. so many things like I want to know. And again, some people think it's silly, but it all matters in my opinion. <laughs> nah, he lied. <laughs> Talker. <laughs> Chris <Right>. lied. <laughs> no way. This all looks normal to you. It look like this maybe in a rush or uh, and it's so funny, too. He just said, this all looks normal. I mean, maybe they were, like, in a rush or, <laughs> no, I don't believe you now. Like, Yeah. <laughs> the way either. he's, like, over-explaining that right there. <laughs> like, no, it just, I, I just made up my mind. Like, the, the way that their beds are is not normal. I don't believe them. <laughs> yeah. It's about normal. I think it's, go get up first. Yeah, no, just like, around. Sure, let's go get her. All right. Okay. All right. No, we don't wake up till they wake up. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Do you mind if I keep this? You try to go yeah. through it. Thank you. Got to do. Okay. Maybe I can find some other names or whatever on Facebook list. So right there, did Baumhaber, he asked if he could keep Shadan's phone, I believe. Yeah. I think he said, maybe there's something I can find on it. Or... And Chris said, yes. Like, Chris could have been like, no, let me hold on to it in case she comes back. Or, you know, like, that's once again, like, read the suspect. Like, would you mind to come on in with me and just have a chat so we can, like, think through some things? Like, I know he wasn't under arrest. I know they can't force him, but... They could have asked, and that what that's what trips me up a little bit. Yeah, and and you think so many people compare this to the Scott Peterson case, which I can understand. You know, a lot of similarities, a lot of differences, but something that they did on day one. You know, they come home, the back door of Lacey's house, Scott and Lacey's house was unlocked. You know, that is interesting, and it's kind of like alarming. Um, and they asked uh, Scott to go down on day one for the interview, and he had no problem. So it, for people who have studied Watt's case, they've said things like, well, she was just a miss, or it was just a, they try to like downplay it. Like, well, there exactly. was no crime yet and all this stuff. And it's like, but how do you know until you 
discover the crimes, you know, taking place, like, shouldn't you still kind of get the husband, like, to come down for an interview or some formal statement? Yeah, and it wasn't even, once again, like, Lacey was Lacey and Connor, like, she was pregnant. Again, Shanann was pregnant. Plus, there are two, they're like babies, in my opinion, like toddlers, basically. I mean, Bella wasn't a toddler anymore, but you get the point. Like, it wasn't just a grown woman missing. There were also two little children missing. It's always yeah. going to bother me that they did not at least ask him to come in that night. Because like you said, they asked Scott. He went, had an interview. It didn't happen here. I mean, to be right off the of search. See, I couldn't hear that, but there was something where Chris says, if it goes on too long. Like, I didn't catch it. I don't know what he's saying, but like, hold on. Let me rewind, rewind it a little, a little bit. Hi, Seth. All right. No, we don't wake up. My later. friend, curious. Yeah. Hello. Okay. Hello, Mel Mac. All right. Hey, Mel Mac. Do you mind if I keep this? You try to go through it. Yeah. Do what you got to do. He said, "Do what you got to do." Yep. I mean, to be right off the top of the search, if it goes on too long, can Not everyone. Who is that me for? Advised. Uh, it sounded like he said something about Facebook. I swear. A lot was, of pictures on there. Yeah, I swear. He was, Chris was suggesting something about an Amber Alert if it goes on too long. And it sounded like Baumhover was saying something like, something about a missing persons and we'll put her name her face out there something about like maybe getting something off of facebook that probably would make sense because yeah you can go to her facebook there's a lot of pictures on there wow i've never like picked up on that before because he asks about an amber alert again even on tuesday yeah he does um he, yep he does to coder yeah. And again, that's something that costs the state a lot of money. Like when you look into cases and stuff like that, like for a state to, for them to okay an Amber Alert, like that's a lot of, you know, tax money, I guess, or whatever. Um, so they kept hers, Shanann's and the girls, some missing person, but with like a medical alert or something. It wasn't a full-fledged Amber Alert. But I do find it interesting because... Amber alerts are specific to kids, you know? So why, again, you can say that, oh, he's just acting. He's acting like somebody took them, somebody kidnapped them. So that's why he's saying this. But again, if you want to look at things differently and look at the case in a way that like we just don't have certain answers, like what if Chris was under the impression that an Amber alert could get the kid if they were still alive? Again, that this is just my opinion. Don't 
don't come at me. <laughs> but I think that it's possible that the kids were still alive at this moment. Um, yeah. Obviously, there's other people involved, but that's why him uh, asking the Amber Alerts is curious to me. You know, did he think that there was still a chance to get them? And in and, and adding also the fact that he's mentioned already, like, can I leave and go look for them? And how, you know, he Sandy comes out later after the case is closed and says that he kept saying that he needed to get back to work that day. Remember? Yes. Yes. This is her purse? That's her purse. Is her medication? She takes these, um, her medication still. See, like, how did she not already know that in a way? Because she grabbed it from the office. And then, right. like, as soon as the cop is there, she's like, is her medication... Like, but didn't you already move it from the off? I'm not trying to criticize Nicole. I'm just saying there's little things yes. <laughs> that I'm just like, wait, you're the one that moved it from the office. So I'm pretty sure you already checked for her medications. I don't know. Yeah. I kind of, again, I do feel like it is possible that she did gain access to the house, did look around, and that explains, you know, not yelling out for her. Um, there's nothing wrong with that though. Like it's not nefarious. Um, and then same here, like I have a feeling she did probably already see the purse, but then wanted to do it in front of the officer. Like I get nervous around police officers. Like it makes me nervous. So I could 100% see some of that. Like she kind of already knew a little bit more. Um, but yeah, I don't think that it is nefarious. I will never, ever, ever believe that NA had any part of the crime or anything like that. Yeah. Um, but like, say you went missing and you were, you know, we lived near each other. Like I could see myself if I could get into your house, going ahead and doing it and then going from there, you know? Yeah. You could and know the door code of people think she possibly went through the basement window. The garage door was broken and alarms were going off. And apparently yeah. it, you could open it. Um, Maybe like somebody lifted it and her son went in there. You know what I mean? Again, just saying there's little things that kind of people wonder. And her saying in her interview, like, am I being arrested? Yeah. You know, again, we're not saying she had anything to do with it, but the family did ask her to take a makeup bag and she took it, right? Yeah, I believe so. Again, these are just mysteries that we just, we go round and round with. Um, but yeah. 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 We're going to get a hold of them. We're working on all that. Did you find your clients? Is that Sorry, I wasn't oh. muted. <laughs> Oh, no, you're fine. I thought Sandy said that. I'm like, yeah, I want to know where her clothes are. <laughs> no, that's funny.
Understandable. Okay, so we're doing what we can to try to find her here. All right. Uh, we're at an hour and a half. I appreciate you going on another episode with me, Kelly. Again, I, I really like doing these together. So if you're busy, I will wait until you're not busy so that we can do episode four or whatever. But um, I really appreciate you coming on here. And thank you to all my moderators and everyone who donated. We appreciate you. Now she has a channel that we've done so much more Watt stuff on. This is just like a sliver of what, you know, good knowledge CDT has. And you can check her out in the link uh, below. And actually in the title, I've at her channel, you can just click right on that and it'll go over. She's got a whole playlist. So in case you guys want to hear more of her thoughts, you can find it over there too. So, And there's more of Amber's thoughts over there also. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of, not a lot of, it's all the same because some things have changed, but that's, I just feel like we've done such good research on this case. Like, you know, again, people are keeping the case out there still, and I appreciate that. But there's some things that Kelly has brought up or shown in this case that I haven't seen anyone kind of stun me the way that she has. Like, wow, I never noticed that. And she just pays really good attention to detail, kind of like I do too. So we just made like a really good team for all this, and there's a lot to go through. So we're going to continue the series and I hope you guys join us on the next one. And thank you again, Kelly, anything you wanted to say? Um, not really. Just thanks for having me. And I am enjoying going back through this as well. And yeah, thank you to everybody in chat and it's good to see you guys. I'm enjoying being back and doing this and getting to see everybody for sure. Yeah, everyone's happy to see you. And again, thank you everyone in chat. And we'll talk very soon. And I'll probably message you soon, Kelly. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'll be there. <laughs> okay, bye guys. All right, good night. Bye.